Hey everybody, thanks for joining and welcome to the third episode of the Project Euler series. So today we'll be taking a look at problem three, largest prime factor. And it tells us the prime factors of this number are 5, 7, 13, and 19. It wants us to determine the largest prime factor of this large number here. So let's go ahead and know our workstation and take a look at that. So I'll be coding this in TypeScript. If you're not familiar with TypeScript, the language is easy to follow. The syntax is very similar to other languages, so it shouldn't be a problem. And what I'm doing here, I'm just putting this in a class. I can take advantage of some utility I wrote that handles running the project and outputting to the console. Okay, so the problem name is largest prime factor. So let's think about how we're going to solve this. Basically, we need to enumerate the factors of the number that they're giving us. So in the example here, we have 13,195. Here they have a much larger number. So we need to enumerate them and get the highest prime value. Now, maybe the most efficient solution, we don't have to enumerate all of the prime numbers. Maybe we can just determine the largest one only. But thinking through the process, it might be a little bit easier if we enumerate them all first. So let's think about how we're going to approach this. So the brute force solution I'm thinking of is similar to a different problem we did previously, where we just iterate over all of the numbers under the numbers. And if it fits the criteria, we include it. So in this case, we would iterate over all numbers less than this number. If it's a prime number and a factor of that number, we would add it and, uh, or we would set it as the running highest number. And at the end, we'll have the highest prime and return that. Now that is very inefficient. So I'm going to see if beforehand we can think of something a little bit more efficient than that. So what I'm thinking is we can just get the factors of the number then do a test on each one to determine if it's prime and if it is keep it in sort of a temporary location and we'll update that location update that variable each time a prime that's larger than that comes in and at the end we'll have the largest prime we can return it that way so that's the approach i'm going to take now so we have to do two separate things we have to get the factors of a number and then we have to determine if the number is prime so i'll do the factors one first So JavaScript doesn't have an int type specifically, but so we'll just be passing a number, but I'm going to call the variable int. So how can we get the factors of an integer? First thing that comes to mind here is a similar brute force solution where we iterate over all the numbers under the integer, and if it divides into the int we provide, it's a factor. I'll start coding that way, and then we'll make it more efficient as we go. So, we have a factors array which will have nothing at first, and we're going to exclude one because in this example they've excluded one here, so we're going to leave that out. So, we'll start with let i equals 2, i is less than int, i plus plus. If int modulus i is equal to 0, it is a factor, so we can add that number into our factories. And when we're done, we'll return the entire thing. So this, this return type needs to be an array of numbers. Okay, there we go. Now what we'll do is I'll just test this out here before we actually do the entire solution just to make sure that we're doing this pro correctly. I'll give it that example number here. And it'll, this will give us all of the factors, not just the primes. But let's see what happens. Okay, so this does look good upon inspection. It includes all of the numbers here and some extra ones. Let's make this a smaller number just so we can figure out in our heads if this is actually working properly. So we'll make it 10. It gives us 2 and 5. Of course, there's 1 and 10 as well, but for now, we're going to exclude those. 
Okay, so I'm confident that this is working properly. So there's definitely ways we can make this a little bit more efficient. So we can make this more efficient by instead of saying less than int, we can make that number smaller. So instead of int, we could say maybe int divided by two because you're not gonna get a smaller divisor than two other than one itself, so. I'll just call this loop limit and set it to int divided by two. This might actually be a decimal, but that's okay because we're just saying less than that. So it'll still behave in the same way. Running that again, we're missing six, so we actually have to say less than equal to. So that looks good. We could probably make this more efficient, but I'm gonna leave it here for now. We can come back to that after we solve the problem if we want to. So that's the first part. Now we have all the factors. The second part is we have to determine if a number is prime. And we can actually take a simple approach here. A number is prime if there's no factors other than one and itself. So we can actually reuse this to determine if a number is prime. So we can say once factors is equal to this stack of factors of integer. Then we'll return true if that is of size zero, false otherwise. So let's test it out. According to this problem here, it says all these numbers are prime, so we can use those as a means of testing. So 29 is prime, that's good. If we set this to 14, we should get false. Okay, so this part looks good. So now we have the two separate pieces, getting the factors and determining if number is prime. So in this solve method here, or what I'll do is I'll make a helper. which is where we'll put our actual logic. So this input can be this number here if you wanna test here. And when we actually go to solve the problem, we'll get that number. So we need to do two things. We need to get the factors of the integer and then for each factor, check if it's prime. So we have to iterate over that array. So the factors is an array of numbers. We have to iterate over it and get the largest one that is a prime. I'm going to do a reduce operation. And what this reduce operation does is it will iterate over the array. It'll have an initial start value of negative one, just some base case I wanna have in there. And so at the first item, the largest prime here will be negative one, which I've initialized it to. That factor will be the first factor in the array. And I'll do some comparison. So I'll say if, if it is a prime and factor is greater than largest prime, return factor. Otherwise, return largest prime. So the return value of this is what will be assigned to the accumulator. So this is the accumulator in this example. Usually an accumulator will do something like add all of the items of an array to the accumulator, and the accumulator will sum it up as it goes. But this time we're just setting it to one of the elements of an array based on some condition. So we're saying if it's prime and factor is greater than largest prime, return factor as the accumulator. Otherwise, just return what we have already largest prime. This part might be extraneous because I believe this algorithm here will give us the factors in order, but I'm gonna leave it in there just in case for good measure. So now that we have that, we can just return the largest prime and it should be good. So now what I'll do is we'll try that for that number they give us there, the first example input. 13195. The answer should be 29. Okay, that looks good. Now we'll try it for this larger number. So it looks like this algorithm is taking a bit of time. The Project Euler website says algorithms should take no longer than a minute to run. If it takes longer than that, then you've definitely got some optimization to do. 
But even in this case, I would say we could do much better than this performance here. Okay, so I've just cut out a piece of the video. This solution was taking entirely too long, so I decided to kill the process. What we'll do is think of a way of making this faster. So thinking through the process, something I notice is there's a bit of redundancy going on. Let's say we get the factors of some large number. Then for that large number, we're saying, is it prime? And the way it says, the way we'll know if it's prime is based on getting the factors of that number. So it's like we're getting factors of factors. So I think we can make this faster by caching some of our responses. So, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a map object where we can store the key as a number, some input, and the value will be an array of factors. So let's go ahead and make that. Um, in JavaScript, TypeScript, it'll be a map. You can also use something hash map or similar in other languages. What we'll do here, we'll check if it's in the map already. So if this dot factors map dot has, we'll just return that value straight away. Otherwise, we'll figure it out, then add it to the map, and return the value that we just got. So let's see if that makes any performance improvement. So already, it's still taking a while, so there's definitely some more optimization we can do. I'm going to give it another minute and see if we can at least get an answer this time. Okay, so I've cut a video segment out. This solution itself is still taking a while, so I'm going to kill the process again. And we're going to see if we can still do anything else to make this a little bit more efficient. So for this particular case, what we can do is instead of just getting the factors of an integer, we can get the prime factors only of an integer. So what I'll do is change that name to get prime factors of an integer. So now we have to think of a different way of determining if a number is prime. So let's think through this concept a little bit. Before that, actually, let's just think of is prime, think through that concept a little bit. And instead of using the other function that we had already, we're going to make our own. I think as we think through this, the process will yield a solution which we can reuse for getting factors as well. So let's start with a limit of t integer divided by two, meaning we already know that the number can't have any pairs that are less than two and greater than half of int because it will get some decimal values. So we'll say limit is int divided by two. For let i equals two, i is less than equal to limit, i plus plus. So now how can, how can we check if it's prime? We check if the int modulus i is equal to zero. If it is, we can straight away say that this number is not prime because it has a divisor. So we're searching for all numbers between the number two and the limit, which is int divided by two, and including that limit. Now we have a faster is prime. I think what we can do here is just create get largest prime factor. Instead of getting all the factors, we can just go through and check it if it is prime. I'm going to remove the factors map for a minute. We can add it back later if we need it. We can have that loop limit here again like we did before. And what I'll do is I'll have a temporary variable. And I'll, I'll set it to one just for some base value. So now what we're doing, we're in the largest prime factor method. We're going through all of the numbers between two and the integer. And we're saying if this particular number divides into i, we're going to see if that number itself is prime. And if it is, we'll set largest prime to that number. We 
going to take the return type, make that back into a regular number, and we're going to return largest prime. And in this do solve, it's a little bit redundant now, but I'll keep it anyway. Let's do get largest prime number, get largest prime factor, input, and we'll try this. This one should definitely be faster. Now even now it still looks like it's taking a couple of seconds, so there might be something that we can do faster. First though, there's a different approach we can take as well. So this loop limit is currently 2. Now that cuts half of the operations off, but we can do better. So if you think about how numbers divide and multiply into each other, they come in pairs. So if you take 12, you have 2 and 6. So, they're, so the reason I call them pairs is because 6 times 2 is 12 or 2 times 6 is 12. So you kind of, with one number, you can determine the other one, meaning that we don't have to explicitly figure out both. So if you draw a line down the middle, you'll have 2 and 6, and then 3 and 4. And in some cases, you might have a number right on the line. Such as, So for 36, you'd have 6 times 6. And that number in the line means that number is multiplying itself, which means we have a square going on. So that line can be determined by the square root of the incoming integer. So that is a much bigger improvement than divided by 2. So what I'm going to do is set both of these limits to the square root of the number, not just number divided by 2. So I'm going to kill this process now. It's been taking quite some time, and I will run it again with that square root optimization. Okay, so that was instant. That was too fast. So now I'm going to do just do some quick sanity check to see if it's still working properly. That gave us 29 for the input there, the original input, so it might be good. 6857 is telling us. Let's check it. Okay, that was correct. So that was the main optimization we needed. Instead of doing divided by 2, we needed the square root. And we solved the problem. So that covers the content for today. If you made it to the end, please like and subscribe. Hit the bell icons for notifications. For more Project Euler videos, I'm going to be posting them pretty frequently. Thanks for watching.